Wise Employment is an Australian not-for-profit employment service for disadvantaged citizens. With 160 offices and 1,000 employees in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, Tasmania, South Australia, and the Northern Territory, each year WISE puts more than 12,000 people on the path to self-sufficiency through purposeful work. Facing overly expensive network infrastructure costs and unacceptable levels of wired broadband downtime and performance issues in its many branch offices, Mick Haville, CIO of WISE Employment, had to figure out how to solve these issues and make WISE truly competitive. Basically, I went to work up one morning and thought, well, why don't we just make everything mobile? And um, and I thought there must be something. As I spent three nights, three sleepless nights, following that and asking lots of people, <laughs> what's not going to work about this? And nobody could come up with a solid reason. Ah, latency, capacity, speed, all these sort of things. Well, hang on, the speed's better. Uh, capacity isn't a particular issue. We're not shifting big amounts of data. Latency, our experience wasn't latency was a big problem. So yeah, so, so we, we cut all the copper to our sites back in 2014, early 2014. And it's just been a fabulous journey since then. Our, our laptops and cradle points all connect through uh, a private APN with Telstra, a corporate APN. So we go directly into the Telstra cloud. Now from there, then we have firewalls that go out uh, through our data center to internet. We've been enabled to grow very rapidly, and that's been very much supported by our change to mobile broadband connectivity. We initially maybe test out an area by going into a, a shared working space. Then, once, as we build that in, we can, you know, we can, you know, two weeks later, we can we can move out to a bigger site. So we can really scale scale our premises up to, to the need to the local need. Well, we, we've known for some years that this was a was a gift that keeps on giving, and, and year on year we saw the financial benefits, the reliability, and so on. Uh, but of course, the, the big hit, the big opening realization was when we went COVID, and our staff, who were well used to working anywhere in the country on our systems and an instant log on and uh, an access to an, into our environment, they just carried on as though nothing had happened. And, and our competitors were struggling, trying to send out, find p laptops, send PCs to people's houses, setting up VPNs. The potential, I think, to change the way and what we do in, in, in our business. I want to be on the leading edge of, of those technical changes so we can take advantage of it. I mean, we, we one, of, one of the things that is very interesting for the future, uh, well, a couple of things in that space as it is, is augmented realities. So one of the things with, with augmented reality is to, to be able to experience working in, in particular uh, careers without actually going and doing it. And the other one is the capabilities around bioengineering, ex exoskeleton type assists for, for clients, where I would think that IoT would be very much uh, an important feature. Um, you know, to, to, to give mechanical assistance to people with, with physical disability. People that were naysayers to, to admit they were wrong. Because uh, we, we had a lot of pushback in the early days by, uh, by people that just didn't believe it was going to happen. And the, the CFO, when, uh, when she admits that, uh, that it saved us money as well, that, that's, quite a, that's quite an admission.